Hey guys, and welcome. Today on ATPL3, we're going to be talking about air speeds, their errors, and how we calculate them, including a real example from yesterday's flight in the 737. So, what type of air speeds do we have? What definitions are there? First of all, we've got indicated air speed, calibrated air speed, equivalent air speed, true air speed, ground speed, and our Mach number. These are all the speeds we work with in the aircraft. Every aircraft is fitted with a pitot static system, compromises of a pitot tube and a static port, or more than one of each. The pitot tube measures pitot pressure, essentially the flow of air hitting that pitot tube, sometimes called ram pressure as well, and the static port measures static pressure. The airspeed is derived from the difference between the two. Simply put, indicated airspeed is what the airspeed indicator shows us. Now these systems are not perfect and they're prone to errors, mainly due to the position of the pitot tube and the static ports they cannot be positioned in one place to work at all air speeds and all pressures. So they are prone to errors depending how high, how fast, the angle of attack of the aircraft, etc. There can also be errors of up to 10% for uncoordinated flight, if you're sidestepping, that kind of thing. Next up, calibrated speed. Calibrated speed is our indicated air speed, corrected for position and instrument errors. These errors are very small and only really come into play when the flaps are down. If you imagine when you put the flaps down, the center of lift uh, actually goes backwards and you'll notice any time in any aircraft you put the flaps down, the nose tends to pitch down and it bubbles up a little bit. So as you pitch down, then that pitot tube, which is fixed on the airframe, is now gonna be pointing slightly down and it's not gonna be getting the full flow of air into the pitot. Uh, so essentially, the indicated airspeed will now be slightly lower than the actual airspeed. So that's instrument and position error, our first error. Equivalent airspeed is a little harder to define it's where the dynamic pressure is the same as the dynamic pressure of the true airspeed. It's a bit of a mouthful to follow. There's no real need to concentrate on that. What you need to understand is the error and where it comes from. Now the error is the compression error. The difference between calibrated and equivalent airspeed is negligible up to speeds of about 200 knots and right up to about 10,000 feet. After that, faster speeds, higher altitudes, that's when it comes into play. And it's the compression that gives us the error. If you imagine the pitot, it has a limit to the amount of air that it can actually take in at one time. So at higher speeds, then there becomes a compression error. So again, there won't be enough flow of air through that pitot to give you an accurate reading. But again, the reading is going to be lower because you're going to be going faster and not as much air is going to be getting into the pitot tube just because it's saturated. It can't take any more air. I think that's an easy way to understand both errors and how we get from indicated to equivalent air speeds. True airspeed, this is the one we're normally trying to calculate. It's relative to the atmosphere, relative to the mass of air that we're flying in. Essentially, the true airspeed and heading constitute the velocity relative to the atmosphere. And TAS is what we use for performance, is the speeds indicated in the flight manuals. Um, the pilot reports that we make are generally in TAS. It's what we use for flight plans, etc., etc. So this is the one we need to calculate. And I'll go over these three equations of how to calculate the TAS in a second. Ground speed. That's relatively straightforward. It's the speed that we're doing over the ground. Easy to calculate. We take the true airspeed and we add or subtract the component of head or tailwind, which we can work out with a CR3, CP5, these kind of uh, devices. And Mach number, again, the definition of a Mach number is just a ratio of the speed of sound that we're doing. Decimal 77, we're doing 77% of the speed of sound. There is another video on my channel where I talk more about uh, Mach number and how to calculate it. So now let's talk fun maths. Calculations. You get these in the ATPL exams. They can also be useful on a daily basis if you remember the quick ways to calculate them. Rather than calculations, I'll say approximations because they're not an exact science. There's a lot of rounding up, rounding down, and a lot of guesstimation in these equations, but they will get you in the ballpark close enough. Don't get too caught up on getting the exact number, but it will get us into the ballpark. These equations you can all do on your CR3, CP5, these kind of devices. I'm gonna show you a snap. I'm gonna... <laughs> I'm gonna show you a snapshot of the primary and nav displays on the 737 from my flight yesterday. I'll put it up on the screen somewhere. I'm not as fancy editing as other folk maybe. There. <laughs> so as you can see, uh, we have our TAS on the left display there, it says 448. Uh, our MAC number on the right says decimal 773 and our Indicated airspeed says 262, flying at flight level 350. 
You can see on the top left there as well, we have a pretty nasty headwind coming from the right and that headwind from the right is giving us our angular difference between our heading and our track. Our heading being close to 210 and our track being uh, 200 degrees. So let's get to calculating. We're gonna work out our TAS in each of these. If in the exam you're asked to calculate the MAC or your indicated airspeed, you can twiddle these around and there's an easy equation to do that or you can just move these digits around with simple maths. So our first one, we're gonna use the MAC number to work out the TAS. So our TAS equals alpha zero, which is the speed of sound in ISO conditions at ground level, which is close enough to 661. A lot of people even round to 600 to get a quick guesstimate of this equation. I'm gonna use 661. You times that by the Mach number, and you times that by the square root of the temperature, these are in Kelvin, at ground level, ISO conditions 288, 15 degrees, the temperature that we are currently at. So let's do this example. 661 times decimal 77 times, I'm just gonna do a guesstimate here, 288, let's say we're minus 30 degrees up at flight level 350, is gonna be about 250, 260 Kelvin. So it would be about the square root of, let's say 250 divided by 288. As you can see, a lot of times this is just negligible. You can actually do speed of sound times the Mach equals the TAS. And that's where we get that short equation to move them around the place. This is essentially decimal nine something. I'm just gonna call it decimal nine to keep it simple today. So if we multiply 661 times decimal 77 times decimal nine, we get 458. Close enough to 448, which is what's being indicated by the instruments. Uh, the next way to work it out, again, these are approximations. Indicated airspeed plus indicated airspeed. Essentially, this is actually one bracket. It should probably be a double bracket there. So we do the indicated airspeed, we lose 2% of airspeed for every thousand feet we climb. So in this case, it would be 262, that's our indicated, plus 262 times 35 times 0 0.2, about decimal seven, 445. So that one's actually got us a little bit closer to 448. The last one, it works better for higher speeds and higher levels, hence why it has the flight level in there. So this one would equal 262 plus flight level 350 divided by two would be 175, which equals 437. I have my cheat sheet. So as you can see, they're all got pretty close to the 448 that the aircraft is actually indicating. Three relatively simple equations. You just need to understand where they come from, how to use them. They're actually very easy if you use them a couple of times. I hope that's cleared up any doubts you may have had about speeds, how to calculate them, error explanations made sense. I hope you enjoyed the real example calculations there. All the best, see you next time.